Well, hello there, chums. It is Captain Stephen XO, and today I am going to be jumping into the NMSA hub and going to a location that's been sent to me by James P. Vale to pick up an S class alien multi tool. Because right now I have this little pistol. As much as I love it, um, I can't upgrade it. So, yeah, may as well go grab this alien multi tool because I've got two experimentals, so why the heck not? Right, so let's uh, interact with the portal. And we're going to go to activate said portal. Here we go. Activate portal, sweet. And then I'm going to need the portal code, which I just need to grab. One be a sec. Right oh Okay. So we need a diplo, diplo, sunset or jalafash. We need ourselves one of these eclipsy and eclipsy things. We need a whale. Heck yes, a whale. Another sunset, a gem or voxel. Okay. An eclipse and a waypoint. A boat and a battle. And we need a whale and then an eclipse. That should do the trick. That should activate it. And we should be going over to James P. Vale's area of space. Now, he's a member of the Trident, so they do put Tridents pretty much everywhere. So don't be surprised if we see a giant Trident when we arrive at the opposite side, but that would be a good sign. Heck yes, let's go! We arrived on this planet. Yep, Torquay by James P. Vale. NMSA Trident Butlins System. <laughs> Love that. Welcome, Captain. Okay, so you've got to reload, right, for the S class multi tool. So let's do the reload. So you just jump into your ship, out of your ship. That creates a save point in this area from the opposite side of this portal. And then we should be able to reload, come back, go up to the station, and we should find the alien 24 uh, slot multi tool there. So here we go. Let's, um, let's do the reload so options and reload. So now I've Excellent. Reloaded. Uh, I, I need to come back and have a look at this base. I mean, look at that. That giant trident is awesome. I used to be a massive fan of Ulysses 31. Well, I still am a massive fan of Ulysses 31. And this trident reminds me of the bad guys in Ulysses and who they're up against. I think it might just be the trident symbol that we've got here from that base computer rather than there being a physical structure. I could be wrong, but I'm not seeing much here. So I know there is another base on this planet. I mean, we've got that there. King of the First Space which I think it is just that trident. Forgive me if I'm wrong, King of the First. But yeah, we will come back and look at um, the other base by Jason P. Vale. And a bit, I mean, not Jason. Um, James. I don't know why I keep saying Jason. Got it stuck in my head. I think it's Jason and the Argonauts, you know, and this giant thing here. So here we go. Yep, yeah, I think this is just that for one thing. So let's uh, close that. So it's James. James P. Vale and uh, King of the First. Okay, right. So let's uh, go up to the station. And we shall see if the multi-tool has spawned. And then we'll be going to that base over there. James P. Vale's base. There we go. Right, let's go. And we have liftoff. I think the last time I actually showcased James's base, I called him Jason once in that video as well. Once you get something stuck in... Well, once I get something stuck in my head, it's very hard to shake it loose. I don't know why. Right, so here we go. Let's uh, head on over. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Ha ha! say I love the naming systems in this Margate as well he's named them all after English seaside resorts um so some of this humor might be lost on some of the actual viewers but how oh my days I just make me chuckle so Budlins is like a holiday camp that um isn't everyone's cup of tea in the UK um I mean I've been a couple of times and I had some awesome fun I went to an 80s weekend at Budlins and it was freaking fantastic it really was it was it was a laugh and a half I tell you well we played a drinking game like Roxanne and uh, one of my friends he got very drunk on um, Aftershock and Bailey's mixed in the same glass it curdled in his stomach and uh, yeah he was very poorly and he ended up um, his mouth gave birth to some pink fluffy clouds uh, yes yeah, so <laughs> It was, yeah, oh, we've gone off on a tangent now, me thinking of my butlin days. Awesome, great fun. Yeah, heck yes, I know. But anyway, let's uh, press on. Let's have a look at this multi-tool. Let's see if this is the multi-tool in question. Heck yes, that's what I wanted. Dream Turner. Oh, what a cool name. Okay, yep. Oh, Dream Tuner, sorry. That's my, me, uh, but even still, that's probably better than Dream Turner. Dream Tuner Mark X. Ha! Yeah, we're going to be having that. That's awesome. Yep, so we're going to swap it for the little pistol. I did enjoy having that pistol. It was a nice little multi-tool. But this is far nicer. I can't actually bring it out onto my person at the moment, but let's uh, just jump into here. 
What a cool looking multi tool that is. So I'm going to have to do this up. I like the sort of like little burn marks there or whatever they are. They're cool. And these little lozenges. Very swanky, isn't it? And the black crystal in the end there. It looks like a thing of evil, doesn't it? But it, it's strange. There's not really a race that this sort of sits or, or is attuned to or accustomed to. So I'm wondering whether these alien multi tools that we're seeing here are what the alien race might use if there is one that maybe flies that live in ships normally. Because it doesn't look like it's from this universe, does it? It really doesn't. It looks like tech from the same universe as maybe some of the abandoned buildings are coming from. So I've grabbed the multi-tool anyway, just in case we do get a new threat. And I'm going to be doing that one up for a PvE combat. Heck yes. Right. Anyway, so where's my shippity ship gone? Oh, it looked like those Corvax were standing on top of that explorer over there for a second. Or Viking, whoever those guys are over there. Yeah, it does look like they're standing on top of that ship, but they're, they're on the balcony. Anyway, I digress. Let's uh, head on down and let's take a look at that base. So I'm going to be heading over to Jason P. Bell's base now. Oh, I said Jason again, didn't I? James! It's freaking James! James P. Vale. Right, okay. <laughs> right, so let's have a look at the Discoveries page. Let's see what he's named all these other planets. Let's go to Discoveries. So we've got Torquay, we've got Southend, we've got Bogner, Skegness, and Margate. These are all the these are all the places in England where there is a Butlins. <laughs> Skegness is the one I went to. I haven't been to any of the others, but I hear they're just as awesome. <laughs> Okay, brilliant. Oh, that, that made me giggle. Thank you very much. James. James P. Vale. Right, so now we're going to go find his base. I think it's the opposite side of the station, so let's swing it round there. Hopefully not fly back into the station. Right, here we go. Let's go to James's base. Let's go check it out. Let's go, let's go. Awesome. This multi-tool is excellent, by the way, James, so thank you very much for sharing that with us. And thanks for finding it inside the NMSA hub. It gives people an extra reason to come here. I'm not going to slow down for that. If it's a, a orange bar on the dis discoveries, I always stop for those. But blue bars are usually just traders or a crashed freighter. So you know when you're going to get something interesting, when you get an orangey sort of reddish bar up here. So yeah. Okay, let's head on down to James's base. Let's see if it's actually rendered. Uh, it's looking like it has. What the fudge is this? It's a long line of black blocks so far. It's a massive great big corridor. Hold on. What the... It looks like a Dyson vacuum cleaner or something. You know, one of those uprights, doesn't it? That looks like a vacuum cleaner head over that end. I have no idea what I'm looking at from the sky, which I would have thought if it was supposed to be something, I would be able to tell. Right, okay, so the landing pad seems to be sort of built into the ground. Interesting. Okay. Oh, it's like a fort of some kind. Oh, I think I need to find the base computer. Where is said base computer? Uh, because maybe the base computer would say exactly what this base is. Look, you can just about see the landing pad. Oh, it's got a number two there. That is so cool. Nice. And there's a number one here. There's hidden landing pads under this flooring. How the devil has he managed that? That is pretty damn sweet. Oh, I see. He sandwiched it in somehow. That is so awesome. Well, well done you. That's that's a first for me. That's that's really quite sneaky. And you can still see the landing pad screen here. That that works quite nice. I haven't seen that implemented before, but that is that is very cool. Well done. That's that's the first freaking thumbs up for you. Vortex cubes outside of a cave. Who would have funk it? Who would have funk it? Um yeah. Right, well let's uh, head on in. We've got some gnarly creatures over here as well. We've got cat sharks. Heck yes. I think people have seen me come across cat sharks before. I know I've said those two words in conjunction. But these ones have got stag-like horns. Very nice. Okay, well this is a bit strange. Has your base sunk? Or was you meaning to make it so you can't actually walk through the front door? Okay, well I'm going to jump over. And we'll, I'll take a look inside. Okay, I don't think it has sunk. Because these floor panels are about right. But this is quite nice. This, this, room, this is a little bit more... What the fudge? Oh my days, that made me freaking sh almost shite my pants. It's a freaking trophy. I thought that was an NPC and it was just statically still. That threw me for a second. Git. Okay. Right, so we've got double teleporters. Normally you're restricted to one per base. So that's definitely been glitched in. And I like the fact that you've knocked that over and put it at a skew. That's cool. And it's like these NPCs have all been turned to stone. 
that is such a cool idea to use the trophies at little terminals because not all the time are you going to have people at these terminals that really works well i like that it's almost like medusa's been here and reverted them to stone though it's quite creepy okay i'm liking this little uh, planted out area because you've got some harvestable plants in with normal plants this is this is freaking ace this really reminds me of uh, funders sort of uh, chinatown build this is freaking mind-blowing work well done I like having the little mini harvestables amongst non-harvestables. This is great. The use of your Quicksilver items has really worked well there. I'm liking the uh, spiky type wall over here as well that you've used these upturned... Well, these must be... I don't know how you did that. I'm not even going to freaking lie. I think you've probably glitched in a paver to the side. What is this? Is this an outdoors freaking cinema? Hybrid fauna dome. Okay. Um, interesting. Oh, uh, I think this should be flora, not fauna. So fauna is uh, the animals. Flora is plants. OK, you've got two plants in the same spot in some of these, like there. So that's where you would normally put in doors. I did see a video on how you actually do this. So you put in all the plants without putting in any doors from the outside first. And then you sort of go inside after putting the door on. It's, it's quite complicated. But if I grab that, I'm going to get shed loads of plants. There we go. And then there's a few others there. Additional ones that it didn't harvest. So I can now run around and harvest those as well. Nicely done. That's sneaky. I like it. Okay, so let's uh, head on this way. And we've got loads of other quicksilver plants here. What a lovely sort of garden you've got here. This is mentals. Okay, right, try a... What was that? What did that say? What did this say? Try a... Oh, okay. That, that does not stay up long enough for me to make freaking sense of it. All right. Um, try a pagalactic gargle blaster. Right, I guess this is like a milkshake or smoothie bar of some description. And I like the little wiki droid there. Adds a bit of movement. I like the use of the ladder to bring in some light very nicely done and there's a seating area as well this is excellent it's like some sort of i don't know festival or parade or some sort of well it's got a lot of green space i say green space it's orange or red but yeah it, it, it's actually really cool isn't it let's see where this balcony takes us this place just goes on doesn't it on and on and on let's head down here so there's where oh there's a little boy i, I like that that is such a cool little idea yeah it looks like it's floating in the water nicely done there's so many things in this base for base building ideas. Is this a diving board? <laughs> it's a freaking diving board. Yeah, just... Oh, it's Butlins. That's what he's built. He's built freaking Butlins. Excellent. As I've only just freaking tweaked it. It's in the freaking title, Steve. <laughs> oh, my days. It's a... It's obvious when you know, isn't it, chums? This, this is Butlins. This is a holiday resort. Yeah, the... the oh. Yeah, well, well, let's dive in. Let's have a look what the waters are like in in in, in freaking Butlins. Nice. So this is cool. Oh, that is quite a nice ocean, actually. You found quite a nice planet ocean-wise, it has to be said. Love it. Okay, well, that's. I've got my very own Butlins inside of No Man's Sky. This is great. Well, thank you, James P. Vale, and thank you, members of the Trident, King of the First, and everybody else that is a a member of the Trident. So yeah, this is great really really cool what, what's that floating up in the sky oh it's, it's a trident i completely missed the trident i don't know how yeah I, probably because it didn't render i guess but there we go so this is my own butlins inside of no man's sky that is freaking ace james p vale you are freaking awesome so thank you very much for the invite really enjoyed my visit and uh, thank you very much for my new multi-tool which is freaking ace so if you do want to come here grab yourself a multi-tool and maybe come visit this lovely base there's the coordinates right there let's try and get them somewhere you can see them okay there we go i think that'll be okay and uh, yeah um come and grab yourself an alien multi-tool and enjoy butlins one of the best uk holiday destinations one can ever have <laughs> yes it's an experience you've got to try it at least once before you can knock it i suppose look at the, those are uh, quicksilver items are actually moving aren't they that's quite trippy in fact that is trippy that's cool anyway you guys out there have been freaking awesome thank you for tuning in i'll see you again soon take care goodbye for now goodbye 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 
there are multiple ways to support my channel, Patreon being one of those. Those are all my Patreon backers thanking you, Patreon backers, heck yes, and I also have YouTube membership. Now, there are different tiers on Patreon and YouTube membership. Be sure to check both out before making a decision. Or if you prefer merch, head on over to Teespring, grab yourself a gnarly mug or a t-shirt or something else, heck yes. Or hit a like, a subscribe, or that notification bell, or leave a comment. I love reading comments. Well, just don't skip the adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Hit one of these tiles on the screen. Stay with Captain Stephen X so that little bit longer. Thanking you.